When it comes to the subject of welding penetration, here is what is common belief. Watch the footage of this weld here. All right, getting set up to do this weld right here. When you're doing a weld like this outside corner joint here, it's got to be learned in a way that when you do it, it's done with perfect techniques that control the heat absolutely textbook. The amount of filler material you are using is perfect. And we have the arc focused properly into the joint the way it's supposed to be. And when all of these details are done properly, this is what you should see, right? Right here. We can see that the top side looks quite good with this one. All of the details that we mentioned have been done really well. And when we flip it over, we can see a really nice strip of consistent penetration on the other side. But this sets an unrealistic expectation for somebody who's first learning. When somebody starts to learn something like this one, here is what is common. Uh oh, yep, that's right, no penetration. Now to everybody out there who is learning or experiencing results like this, here is my hot take with this one. And this one is gonna ruffle some feathers. Who cares? The welding penetration is not important. <laughs> oh my word. Now hear me out and let me ask you something. Look at this weld here. Different joint but check it out. This one obviously does not look quite the way that we want. We can see some areas that are wider than others. We see some areas where the filler material isn't blending into the base material at all. We see the stepping become inconsistent and the distance of stepping creates overcrowding in some areas with the filler material. So looking at the top side of that one there, how does it make any sense for somebody to care what the welding penetration on the other side looks like? Seriously, my advice is when you are learning something about welding, don't worry about the subject of welding penetration yet. So here's how I break something down to my students when I am teaching them. When we are mastering or learning a new joint or a new welding exercise, we are not gonna worry about the welding penetration at all until we've mastered absolutely everything on the top side of the joint that we can see. Think about it. The internet welding mall cops that you see patrolling comment sections on the internet, they want every beginner to pay attention to two sides at once when they're first learning, before they actually even master the one side that they can see, seriously. We wanna be able to master and understand the top side that we can see and understand as we are welding, get good results and be able to duplicate these results. At that point, we are then going to focus on getting results on the back side of the joint with the welding penetration. Need my workbook here. This is the workbook I made for TIG welding aluminum. I made this for you to download, it's completely free. We're gonna go through it and use it in this episode here right now. So let's go ahead and fire up the welding machine here. I'm going to use the Canaweld 201 Pulse D machine here. This machine is a great entry level machine that's a great price point. And this thing is also capable of doing some badass work. And what I'm gonna do here with the welding demonstration is I'm gonna set up and do a butt joint exercise and rip a corner joint as well. Now, the first thing I'm gonna focus on with welding here is concentrating the heat down into the joint. I want things to remain nice and narrow with my welding, and I want my width to remain consistent from start all the way to the finish. A lot of people think that uh, the key to getting good penetration is just to increase and use a lot of heat, but in all actuality, using more heat can kind of just take the same mediocre results that you're already experiencing, and then make these results bigger overall. What we want to do is focus the heat down into the joint without making our welding pass any wider. For the exercise, I'm gonna be using 3.2 millimeter or 1 8 of an inch. These coupons are pretty small, but they're gonna do the job for the demonstration here. So getting some good penetration and some good results with this one should be pretty straightforward. First thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna start with the butt joint, let's go. Again, this material is gonna heat up really quickly. It's gonna start getting pretty spicy near the end of this one, but I'm gonna be controlling things with the foot pedal here, so I'll prevent things from getting out of hand with that. So let's light up and get into it. Okay, getting going here, I am lighting it up with a good Good, hot and patient start. I'm not ripping away from the start. I'm giving it a bit of time. And after things settle down, the cleaning action smooths out. I'm gonna start moving. And you can see that I'm using a good amount of filler material in relation to the amount of heat that I'm using. All I'm doing at this point here is just maintaining the details that I established at the start of this one. As I advance along, I'm just finishing up at the end of the pass, nice and slow here. I'm gonna arc off nice and slow and controlled, and I'm gonna hold for good post flow and not move my torch until it's done. 
one. Taking a look at this one, it looks pretty good on the top side. Let's flip it over and check out the back side here. And you can see I got into it pretty consistently. I'm happy with this one. Okay, now let's set up again. Here's the outside corner joint. Let's go. I'm gonna use the exact same settings that I used for the last joint. And here we go. A good hot start again with good patience, letting the filler material blend out and establish really well with a good smooth puddle. And then once I'm moving, same details. I'm matching the amount of filler material pretty well in relation with the amount of heat that I'm using. And again, if you get all this stuff established well at the start, all you have to do is maintain and babysit as you move. Again, this one is getting hot, so I'm gonna back off nice and slow here, control the heat, keep my filler up, arc off nice and slow with good post flow. And now taking a look at this one too, I'm also very happy, this one looks good on the top side. But I'm gonna flip it over and check out the back side here, and you can see I also got into this one pretty consistently. I'm happy with both of these. So after a demonstration with both of these and being pretty happy with the results that I got, what if you flip your piece over and you don't see results like this? It's all good, my friend. I got you with this one. I'm gonna grab the workbook here and we're gonna go over some pointers that are gonna help you. What's typical is somebody's only gonna see penetration starting to come through near the end of the joint. This is where things typically start to heat up quite a bit and the beginning's gonna look cold and show no signs of this. Take a look in the workbook here. On this page here, we can see what we want to achieve as far as consistent results from start to finish. This applies to any joint that you're doing, meaning we had a good start to the welding pass. I talked about this in the first welding demonstration just a couple minutes ago. Here's the timestamp, go back and watch it if you need to watch it again. This is where we get everything set up for good success with each pass right at the beginning by taking a bit of extra time to make sure that things shape up the way we want before we start moving. If you don't see any consistent penetration with the work that you're trying to do with these exercises, I would mainly focus on this section here, getting everything completely established exactly the way that we want before you start moving and welding along with the actual rest of the pass. Now again, check out this page here. We can see some really important details about the cleaning action. Interesting, right? The cool thing about this detail is this right here, watch. You can see the details of this happening as you are welding if you take the time to look for it. These details we see in the workbook here are all established at the start of every pass that you do. This is what you wanna focus on. I, I know I keep saying it, but we're gonna focus on the start of every weld that you do. We wanna make sure that we give it adequate time to form, we wanna make sure we give it adequate filler material to establish a smooth and blended edge. And again, watch the cleaning action. Make sure everything smooths out and establishes perfectly before you start moving. What's the saying I say all the time? I just said it in like last week's episode. Fill and chill. Don't be in a rush to move on. If you take the time to establish your starts perfectly, you're gonna see these details of good cleaning action as well as smooth edges. They're gonna to start to look better and better with the work that you're doing. Okay, now moving on to another page in the workbook here. Check it out. We need to make sure that with what you are doing to achieve consistent penetration, you need to use the correct stepping distance. If you step too far apart, you're gonna lose the consistency of your edges. This is gonna cause the penetration to become inconsistent. I personally find that stepping a little bit closer together when you're trying to achieve good penetration to be something that can help with this. This is gonna allow the heat to focus into the base material a little bit better. Just make sure that you are matching all of these details with the correct amount of filler material that you are using. Sometimes what can happen if you're not careful is when you step a little bit closer together. You can see examples like this one here where the stepping is a little bit tight and it causes the filler material to kind of stack up in the center of the pass. Excessive filler material can absolutely cause you to block penetration down into your joint as well as the edges having problems blending properly into the base material. Now, something else that a lot of people find really helpful with this, and I teach this in my online programs on my website. This is very, very important. If you want a better chance of consistent penetration with the joints that you're doing, really focus on getting the heat down into the joint and when balanced with the perfect amount of filler material, I think you'll see that this gives you much better results without cranking the heat up to 11. Now, you can also make some adjustments with your travel speed. This can also help to establish some more focused heat down into the joint. And like I keep talking about, these are great ways that you can learn to focus the heat down into the joint without making things wider or bigger overall. Remember, we want focused heat, not more heat in most cases, I guess. Don't just take the problems that you may be experiencing and make them bigger, wider problems. Focus the heat, not increase it. 
Doing this is gonna give you a much better punch down into the material. Now, another thing that you can do if you have the setting on your machine to do this is adjust the frequency. Adjusting the hertz that your machine is running at, this is only possible with an inverter type machine like this one here. What this can actually do is narrow your arc cone a little bit. You can see a couple examples of this here. Again, doing this is going to focus your heat a little tighter. And another thing you can also do is also make adjustments to your balance setting. What you can do is increase the negative side or decrease the cleaning side a little bit. This also punches down into the base material a little better as well. But again, go easy with this one. This can change some other variables that you don't want to change. But honestly, I do need to level with you guys watching here today about something. And at first this may piss a few people off, but hear me out with this. If you finish your weld and it does look great on the top side, but you flip Flip it over like this and don't see any penetration. It's all good. Don't worry about it at all. <laughs> Anybody freaking out hearing me say that? Maybe? Well, if you are, just take it easy. Hear me out on this one. You have to remember, sometimes what we're doing for welding projects is not done on one eighth of an inch material. Sometimes we have to do butt joints on big fat joints like quarter inch material or even bigger sometimes. If I'm smashing absolutely everything with all the tips that we just talked about on a thicker piece of material, do you really think that if I flip it over, I'm gonna see a perfect ribbon of penetration on the backside? No, of course not. If I wanted perfect penetration on a thicker joint, the top side would have to have a weld like this big and welded with all the heat that my machine can dish out. Sure, in some circumstances, you may want to do that, I guess. But at this point, I would personally rather just prepare the joint to do a groove weld with a couple bevels or something like that. Or maybe even multi-pass it with a few different passes instead of one super hot one. Just because you don't see a perfect ribbon of penetration on the back side of a joint, doesn't mean you didn't get good penetration. If you follow the tips that we went over in the workbook a little earlier, there's a strong potential that you absolutely punched in with good penetration just fine. But because the material that we are using is down with the thickness, it might just mean that you don't see it on the other side. Now, in this case, with some welding testing that I've taken in the past or real life situations where I'm doing welding and fabrication and stuff like that, like I said, you would just bevel something or groove the joint out and do a groove weld instead. Or in some circumstances, flip it over and back gouge the other side. And then at that point, you can weld the backside, fill it up nice and hot, same deal, and boom. See, sometimes just because you don't see that perfect ribbon of penetration on the backside, it doesn't mean that you failed. You either make some adjustments or rework something with some back gouging or whatever, or you learn from the results that you didn't see, that you were hoping to see, move on, then try again. Really focus on the starts of every pass that you do when you're trying to achieve consistent penetration. You want consistent and focused heat down into the joint. Use the perfect amount of filler material as you are traveling along with the perfect distance of stepping with your work. It's not always needing more heat. Go get your welding workbook downloaded right now. It's free as heck and I'm really proud that I can make this for all of you. I hope you enjoy it and happy welding.